Know Your Church, Our History, Genesis of the African Methodist Episcopal Church by the Reverend Lyndon Berkeley. Was the African Methodist Episcopal Church, we a uh, Christian community. We were founded in 1787 by Richard Allen. Richard Allen was a Methodist preacher and an ex-slave. And we are part of the family of Methodist churches. Uh, the name of our church tells a lot about the church because within our name contains some of our character. Uh, we are African because uh, we were founded by Black Americans who uh, were descendants of people of Africa. However, the name African is not uh, exclusive. It does not mean that we are only an African church, but we are open to all races. We keep the name African to remind us never to discriminate against anyone who wants to worship God and who wants to love God uh, as we do, right? Our Methodists, because we teach a plain gospel, we follow, we follow orderly rules. And so we are Methodists because we, we continue to follow the plain gospel that the Methodist church has followed. And um, we live by their rules uh, that they have laid down, which are simple for us to, to follow and to understand. And Episcopal, because our chief executive officers are bishops, and our bishops are chosen and elected by a general conference and consecrated there as well. And so you just had a, a, a four bishops elected and consecrated at our last general conference at the beginning of this month. And, and so that's what we are. We are a church. Uh, we are part of the whole body of Christ. And so that's our name, African Methodist Episcopal Church. In uh, 1787, the church began as a protest against discrimination at St. George Methodist Episcopal Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, the most early members had really no formal education. Many of them were ex-slaves, but yes, still they were able to band themselves together and to walk out of St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church because uh, they couldn't pray as they wanted, they couldn't praise as they wanted to. As soon as some white people entered into the church, the blacks had to be uh, relegated to the back or to the balconies. Uh, and at that point in time, uh, Richard Allen, Absalom Jones, and a couple others were praying at the altar and, and uh, some white people were coming into the church and they were told that they had to get up and leave because uh, white people were there and they had to go to the balcony. And so they said, no, let us finish our prayer. After some protests, let us finish our prayer and we get up and we'll trouble you no more. And so they walked out of that church, St. George's Methodist, and formed their own church so that they could worship under their own vine and fig tree. All right, so the EME Church emphasizes for us the importance of being the total Christian in every way. Uh, in the family, we use Christ's teachings as guidelines uh, to help keep our family together. Uh, we ask for Christ's guidance together in the church, uh, we take part in devotions and other church activities to help us to grow spiritually. And we join with fellow members in worshiping God uh, in the community. Uh, we give time and energy to help develop adequate neighborhoods for, for good community living. Uh, we, uh, we also work with the political process. So we're a very social church. We're also very involved in politics uh, and trying to bring God's word to everyone through our actions and everything that we do. And in the world, we use our influence and resource to help the poor, the oppressed, uh, and everywhere uh, just to, to avoid war and to seek social justice. So one of the tenets of our church is, is seeking social justice to make sure that the poor, the marginalized, uh, have their voices heard and their needs met as well. So we just take a quick look at the history of our church, the history of the uh, AME Church. Uh, the founder, Richard Allen, he was born in 1760 and he died in 1831, right? Uh, he um, worked as a domestic slave for his master, uh, Benjamin Chu in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he was born and grew up, right? Uh, he was sold in 1768 to a family uh, in Delaware, a Delaware farmer uh, in America. And later his mother and siblings were sold and separated from him and Alan, he never saw them again. Uh, but in 1777, he experienced a uh, conversion, as we call conversion, um, uh, at a Methodist meeting. And he was is so touched and moved by the uh, experience that he said, my chains flew off and my soul was filled. And so he began uh, preaching and teaching and telling about uh, Jesus Christ to his fellow um, Africans, uh, African Americans at the time, right? And he bought his own freedom from his Methodist master for 2,000 continental dollars at that point in time. And so 
has a lot of money to raise at that point. And so with the help of his friends, the Free African Society, who formed the Free African Society and others, he was able to raise uh, the $2,000 and pay for his freedom. And not just his freedom, but the freedom of his brother as well uh, was bought and paid for. All right, he became what we call a circuit preacher. He spent uh, many years during the Revolutionary War traveling and preaching. Uh, he held many jobs. He was a teamster, a merchant, a woodcutter, a laborer, basically whatever he could do um, to, to raise some funds, he did, right? He returned to Philadelphia in 1786 and returned to preach at the same St. George's Church, uh, the Mother Church of African Methodism. And out there um, in 1787, uh, he had that walk out from St. George. And one Sunday it says when he was um, worshiping, uh, they were ordered to the segregated seats and they, they got up as I said and left and they never come back. Uh, came back. Uh, one day while Alan Marston and Jesus were praying at the altar, the story goes, they were asked to stop and remove themselves to new segregated areas because the whites were entering the church. Alan replied, let us finish our prayer and we shall go and trouble you no more. Alan led the black community out of St. George's never to return. They soon brought a black, bought a blacksmith shop to house their worship and eventually moved to the blacksmith shop uh, moved the blacksmith shop to Six and Lombard Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where Mother Better still stands to this day. Right. So since 1787 to 1815, uh, the early years of our church, uh, we had a whole lot of struggle. Uh, Allen and his followers set out to build a new church, and they faced many problems in that in that period. Uh, they had some legal issues where the Methodists just tried to uh, really take the land and the, the, the property from underneath them. Uh, they had discrimination issues because free blacks were denied social, economic, and educational opportunities as well. And so it was tough for them uh, to exist and to just, just to, to be free to do what they wanted to do. Um, and they had resistance. Uh, the white Methodist leaders kept trying to control the black congregation, kind of trying, trying to take back the black congregation by sending preachers and stuff like that to take over their pulpit. However, through all that, they formed a new church in 1816, uh, following a decisive court victory, which actually they, they were uh, one of the first few, if not the first um, black group to go to court to fight for their land and won their land back from the Methodist church because the Methodist church offered to help them um, to do the legal documents to purchase the land and when they recognized what was going on, the land was purchased to the white Methodist Church with their money. And so they had to go on um, to court to get their land back. And so uh, they won the court victory to get the land back from, from the white Methodist Church, right, which is the Methodist Church that we know today still. Right? And um, from that uh, victory, it stood on a number of little churches, little black churches popping up all over America. From that, five of those churches met and formed the African Methodist Episcopal Church in 1816. Right? So they were founded to meet the spiritual, material, educational, and cultural needs of black Americans. And the word of that church spread throughout the world, uh, especially the Caribbean as well. And over 100 years ago, um, the, the, the president of Haiti sent to Richard Allen uh, to ask Richard Allen to, to please send some people from your church to Haiti so that we can help uh, with this liberation and theory and, and the way that you all have uh, freed yourself to help us free ourselves in Haiti as well. And so since then, um, say 100, about 200 years ago, since then, 200 years ago, um, the African Methodist Episcopal Church has been in the Caribbean for almost 200 years, over 200 years, and we have been in Trinidad and Tobago for over 100 years, almost 130 years, since 1883, uh, is the earliest record of the African Methodist Episcopal Church being in Trinidad, and we've been here ever since, we're still here. And so we were form, founded to encourage black independence and dignity and self-reliance and development. And when I say black, we mean uh, all races except um, that are not Caucasian, right? And so Richard Allen was consecrated as the first bishop of the AME Church. He was elected second, but consecrated as the first bishop of the AME Church in 1816. And for 15 years, he led the church uh, led the first convention of colored men in the United States in 1830, became a national leader. His people named many churches, or we still name many churches and schools after him, right? Uh, the AME bishops themselves were, were first 
popular leaders and heroes of the Black people in the U.S. and around the world. Um, and in education, we use the churches as schools back then and sponsored Black colleges, universities, and um, scholarship programs. Uh, in equality, we supported the original NAACP. Uh, we worked for civil rights through, po through politics, and we're still working on fighting for civil rights so today. Uh, even just recently, um, uh, Reverend Sylvester Beeman did the prayer for, for Biden's um, inauguration and Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie was working with, with, uh, with uh, President Obama in his cabinet. Um, and so in ecumenism, and ecumenism is the joining or the uniting of the churches, uh, we have always played a large role in founding uh, groups like the National Council of Churches and uh, Christian Council of Churches and even um, Caribbean Conference of Churches as well. And so we've always been pressing for ecumenism and the uniting of the churches so to fight these social issues. Uh, Alan chose Methodism for its emphasis on justice, equal justice for people of every race, uh, decent living standards for all was what Alan saw that what everyone should have. He chose it for its independence. Uh, the AME Church is a totally free church, uh, not controlled by any other country or, or any other church in the country. We are not uh, a Roman church, we're not, uh, not uh, a Scottish church, we're not an English church, right? Uh, we don't have those Anglican and, and English names in our, in, in our title. We are totally free uh, church from that type of uh, domination, right? And he chose uh, Methodism because of the gospel. It has a direct appeal to the heart of all people, and it is easy to be understood by all worshippers. It's a very simple gospel um, presentation that we have in the image, not, not convoluted, not, not too confused. Right? And of course, he also chose it because of its organization, because what he recognizes is that his people need needed and still need today uh, orderly structure of rules and regulations for, for members so that we know how to behave. So we are a society as well uh, as a church. And then especially, uh, he chose Methodism because of his Christian consciousness uh, and emphasis on uh, the importance of Christian faith in everyday life uh, we, it unites all believers in brotherhood and it helps uh, each or the church helps each member become God directed and not self directed. And so we're very Christ conscious and we put Christ at the center of everything that we do. It's not about I, it's not about the pastor, it's not about the bishop, it's about Christ and Him crucified for us. So, you know, your church, um, this is the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And what we believe as AMEs, if you sum up what we believe, you'll find that our beliefs are found among these sources. Uh, the Holy Bible, of course, we believe the Holy Bible, uh, that the Word of God is inerrant, that the Word of God is sufficient to, for our salvation and to supply all our needs. So we believe in the Holy Bible and we live and we are guided by the Holy Bible. Right? What we believe is also found in Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so these, that, that prayer is a statement of what we believe as well. We also believe in the Ten Commandments, and so we're a church that says, listen, the, the, the commandments have not been done away by the coming of Jesus, like Jesus said, he'd come to fulfill the laws. So we believe in the Ten Commandments as well. I am the Lord, that God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, you shall have no other gods before me, all the way down to thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, uh, spouse, BMW, Audi, or Benz, all right? Um, it, it, we believe in the Ten Commandments. And the 25 Articles of Religion. And so um, when Methodism was founded, uh, John Wesley uh, took the 39 Articles of Religion of the Anglican Church and cut off a few, summarized, changed a few, and created the 25 Articles of Religion for the Methodist Church. We found that, that 20, those 25 Articles of Religion uh, aptly or accurately convey for us what we believe. And so we've kept it. And there's one article, Article 23, that speaks to the United States of America. And even though we, don't, we haven't changed it, we've amended or put a, a, a note to, to include that we, are, we, we do subject ourselves uh, to the governance of all good governments, right? Not just United States of America, but 25 articles of religion have what we, uh, encapsulate what we believe. And of course, the statement that is called uh, known as the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father, Almighty Maker of Heaven and Earth. This also encapsulates what we believe, and it gives a nice, wonderful statement of what we believe about God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, right, and our, our eschatological or our end time uh, hope, right. 
So these are the sources of what we believe. These, these are the documents, the statements that you would find encapsulate what we believe as an EMH is. And if it's not found in these documents, then it's more likely to questionable is that it's not really something that we believe. So whatever we believe has to be backed up by these documents and these statements as well. And so that's our church. So the African Methodist Episcopal Church is a special designed to meet the special needs of the black people in it, uh, designed in the time of slavery and oppression. And it's still uh, pertinent and applicable to today as well. Uh, the African Methodist Episcopal Church is a leader. It's responsible for the many, for many first black growth development issues, such as the first black organization to own land in America, uh, the first black organization to enter the publishing business and to, to create books and, and magazines and newspapers. The first to promote and administer a program of higher education. And even up to today, we have a number of universities in the United States of America and in Africa as well. And the first to send a black man to the US Senate. Uh, they came out of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. The African Methodist Episcopal Church is universal. So part of the it's part of the worldwide Christian community, which embraces all people who are submit their each area of their lives to God and who serve Christ with their full hearts, minds, and soul. So what does that mean? Uh, being a member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church means being a part of a great black tradition of struggle against oppression and injustice. In fact, not just struggle, but victory uh, against oppression and injustice. Of, of a Christian community. It means being part of a Christian community united to serve God and man. And the EME Church is a way for you to play an active role in the positive development of our world. And that's where we are as a church. And so this is where we are in, located throughout the world. Uh, the highlighted areas that you see, the colored areas, are uh, where you would find African Methodist Episcopal churches throughout the world. Uh, we're all over the United States of America, we're in Canada, uh, we're in London, we're in Holland, we're in France. Uh, we are also in India, uh, we're in South America, Guyana, uh, we're all up and down the Caribbean, uh, we're in Santo Domingo, all right, and we are in Belize, and also now we are back in Cuba. And especially we are in uh, West and South Africa as well as we continue to, to take God's gospel to the world. The African Methodist Episcopal Church is, has been doing that for over 200 years. And so we, we pray that God will continue to give us the strength to, to do it for many, 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 many centuries to come. Uh, but now is our time and we are here right now doing what we can to lift up the name of Jesus and spread Christ's liberating gospel throughout the world. So that is the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And we thank you for listening and paying attention to us. All right, if you need more information, please feel free to call us, um, reach out to the church, WhatsApp us, and let us know. Uh, we will be able to share with you how you too can be a part of the African Methodist Episcopal Church and this wonderful movement of God. Amen.